Hi guys, Cam back here at the at the Battler Workshop. Finally, it's uh, it's been a pretty pretty long two months um, with the with the shutdown I was on. Um, you know, I've got I've certainly long days, 12, 13 hour days, and I think in the in the six weeks uh, I had uh, three single days off. So very very tiring, but uh, we're certainly uh, out of that now, and uh, hopefully um, getting back uh, back to normal normal duties at work. Um, back to the slotting attachment. Um, we're going to start machining up the uh, the mounting feet for that next. A um, little bit of work in these. Um, there's a couple of variations that I want to include into these particular feet for maybe something I want to do down the track. So I'll include that in the build as well. I want to do this uh, into this machining set as well. So um, we'll pop into the office in a sec and uh, and we'll go through the CAD and uh, what we're doing and, and how things are going to go together. Um, at the end of this video, um, I'm going to talk about a personal issue which is going to affect my time back here in, in my workshop uh, for quite some time. Um, probably an important thing to have a talk about. Um, something that, uh, that sometimes we're, we're faced with in our life and uh, I'm certainly faced with it now. So uh, we'll have a bit of a talk about that um, at, the, uh, at the end of this video and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, where things are at there. Alright guys, we'll see you at the ticket. Right guys, hopefully this is going to show up okay. Um, these are the two feet that we need to uh, machine up to be able to mount this slogging attachment onto the, uh, the cross slide or the saddle of the lathe and I, you can see I've got it imposed over here. Um, I've had to change this design a little bit to suit the mounting holes that I've currently got drilled and tapped into my, uh, my cross slide at the moment but I've got to do another two holes. Uh, which means I've got to pull this assembly apart, which is okay because I also want to measure up the little um, feed screw on this because uh, uh, it's getting uh, rather worn out and I want to machine up a new one so it'll give me the opportunity to uh, to get that measured up uh, when we do get this stripped out. Um, included in these in these feet, I've got a, uh, a key that's going to be mounted inside here which will act as a stop up against the side of the saddle. So the fasteners aren't taking any of the uh, impact load, not that there's going to be a lot of impact load, but aren't going to be taking any of that side impact load. Uh, it'll be transferred onto the key here. And uh, I've got the housing keyed into the feet as well. So I'm just going to do a keyway cut uh, on this one only, just so that that, uh, that uh, side load gets, uh, gets transferred through uh, from the housing um, to the foot to the keyway. Uh, so there's no way that that's going to move around. You'll also notice too that I've actually machined out um, a weirdo kind of slotting arrangement in uh, in each uh, each side. Uh, the reason being that I may want to mount this in the on the milling machine table. And I want to make up a slide arrangement with a lead screw so that I can um, adjust this backwards and forwards and actually do slotting um, off the milling table directly onto uh, onto the dividing head. So that's just a side view of what it looks like there. Right, the details. Let's go up and have a look at the details. So this is the one that's going to be mounted up hard against the side of the saddle. So you can you can see that keyway that I've got cut in there um, to be able to take that side load, and then you can see the keyway that's going to be basically um, mating between this uh, this foot and the actual housing so the housing actually has these uh, already pre-cut ready for it and then i've got a, a small scallop you can see here just to clear the uh, clear the uh, end caps in bearing caps on the uh, on the housing so um, i've just put in where the mounting holes are going to be so uh, i've got two holes that i can already pick up on the on the actual saddle itself as i said i've got another two holes that i'll need to need to drill and tap to uh, be able to mount up the other end so that's the operator side or the side that's closest to the lathe and this is the side that's closest to the tailstock. Um, I'm not going to put the keyway on this side here. As I said, uh, it doesn't need to transfer any um, any loading. Um, we'll just uh, we'll just do that a straight machining and uh, drill and counterboard to be able to mount that in and it'll, it'll mount up against the side there as a reference, but uh, there won't be any impact load coming onto this, uh, onto this slide base. And once again, I've got those uh, little slideways that we're going to machine into this. Um, as I said, I want to make up a, a slideway arrangement on the uh, 
that I can mount onto the uh, table of the, the milling machine. So the stock on these, um, I've got a bit of 25 millimeter stock that I've got, 100 millimeters wide, and uh, I've increased these out from 190 out to 210 to be able to pick up those particular uh, fasteners. And I've got this set up in such a way that uh, I've got maximum amount of travel on the saddle backwards and forwards. So I can I can come out to a diameter of around about 130, 140 and, and cut keyways into that. So I've tried to sort of balance this out and get me the best of uh, the best of both worlds. All right, so enough talking. Let's uh, let's get out in the shop and uh, and let's make a start. All right, I've spent a bit of time lubricating the machine up because it hasn't run for uh, for a couple of months. So that's important. If you haven't run a machine for a while, just go over it, have an eyeball, get everything uh, oiled up, greased up that needs to be done. Um, so we saw some grief down the track. All right, so with this bit of stock. I'm going to uh, um, machine them at the finish size, the two stocks, uh, they measure 88 in depth or width, um, 210 in length and 23 in their, uh, in their width. So we'll get, uh, we'll get both of these knocked out to, you know, at the size and we can start machining in the, uh, in the features. Uh, we've machined both blocks to width. Just going to take a lick on the top and machine that back to depth, which is 23. These dimensions, the overall width and overall depth, aren't overly critical. As long as I've got them parallel, I'm happy. I've, I've got them within 2,000 of nominal size, so I'm fairly happy with that on the width. So we we'll just get to machining the uh, the thickness now. As I said, we're down to 23 out of a bit of 25 mil stock. there. Alright, uh, we'll flip that over and we'll bring that back to uh, back to back to thickness. Alright guys, we'll do the final cut of thickness on this. I'm measuring up at about uh, 23.15 to 17 so I'm parallel within about um, 0.02 which is um, plenty good enough for uh, for this. So uh, we've uh, going to take a cut of around about 0.13ish and we'll see how we go. like on this side. That's 0.03 over nominal. That's 0.03 over nominal. So right, I might leave it there. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut the groove, the registering groove, while we've got this reasonably parallel and set up. So that registering groove is four mil deep. So to check and make sure I've got four mil left there. Yeah, we've got about five mil. So I'll set up with the carbide cutters first. We'll rough it out, and then we'll um, uh, the carbide insert tools, and then we'll come back with a with a wide end mill just to uh, to get that uh, cleaned out and nice and square. All right, we'll get ready with that one now. Carry on with that. 
I've probably said it many times in the past, these are fantastic mills, these Bridgeport style mills, but uh, <laughs> rigidity isn't one of their strong points, but um, yeah, we just backed the depths off a little bit. All right, I'll keep going with that. Um, I'll bring you back when we're starting to uh, get that to finish depth and to finish width as well. All right, so the final cut with the, uh, with the tip cutter. Um, I'm going to leave half a mil on the thickness and about a mil, mil and a half on the width. But we'll come in with an end mil and we'll, we'll tidy that out. It's important that these thicknesses between the two base plates are identical so that when the slotter is set up, it's slotting dead parallel to the center line of the uh, of the lathe. And if one's a little bit thicker than the other, it's going to be cutting it uh, in a tapered fashion. So uh, that's one thing we don't want. So we're going to be fairly particular about getting this uh, this thickness right. Right, we'll just mill the ends on this. I, I went to the carbide cutter, the uh, high speed steel one looked like, uh, looked like a set of teeth on it. So uh, this will give us, give us a better finish. I'm just gonna take around about 0.2 of a mill off this edge and we'll come back to the other side and we'll, uh, we'll mill it to length, which is uh, 210. We are now. This isn't critical. This length. It's um, yeah, 0.03 over. I'm not going to worry about that. Just make sure that we do all of our dimensions for our features off one edge. We make that the mating edge of the other one as well. So we keep everything relatively uh, in line. All right, we've got this one to a to a stage where we're ready to start drilling and counterboring. Um, I'll take this out and uh, I'll bring the other the other base plate up to the same stage and uh, that says that that's got a bit more work to be done on it with the um, with the keyways that'll need to go in. All right, I'll see you back in a tick. Right, the next thing I need to do is to um, machine these eight millimeter keyways. These are going to register the housing uh, against um, the chuck side um, foot base. So I need to be very accurate in this uh, as I'm using that as a, an edge to come up against uh, on the actual foot itself or the base itself. I've got to get this reasonably accurate to, uh, to get that mating fit. So we're going to be cutting this keyway down through here at the moment to match. And uh, I've left this set up um, from when I did the, uh, the machining of the step down. Uh, as I said, I've got that between the two, you know, within 0.02 of a millimetre, so I'm happy with that. Um, we'll start cutting this keyway. I'm using a six mil cutter, and I'm gonna open that out, and I'm gonna follow that opening, or gauge that opening with uh, with gauge blocks to uh, to make sure that we're getting a good good fit. And then we'll try the housing onto the actual base itself with the key in it, and we'll see how things are going, and we can do some nipping and tucking if needed. Um, you now I'm only talking uh, microns there. All right, we'll get into it and uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, before I do, I've, I've already done the, the edge finding from edge to edge to, to get my datum points and I've, I've set my DRO up to, uh, to suit. Right, 
tomorrow I'll continue coming out to depth and uh, and side cutting on this and we'll bring you back when we're getting uh, getting close to a result. Right so um, with the 6mm cutter I've side cut and as I said I like to side cut when I'm trying to uh, come to a set tolerance on a keyway. I like to use end mills too, I, I find that they don't tend to drag the chips like a slotting drill does and, and give those little tiny divots all the way through and uh, I think they're a lot more stable to run with. Um, so at the moment I'm out to just on the gauge box. I've got a six, and this is only just going in. It's a 1.36 plus a 6.5, which is uh, around about 7.86, which is pretty much where I am for my digi. So um, my digital readout in this cutter is cutting extremely true. So um, I'm going to come out to the one mil side cut on either side. So six mil cutter plus one mil either side gives me my eight mil. And then we'll recheck that again. But looking at that the way it is at the moment, um, everything's looking um, pretty true. All right. It's our 8mm gauge block in there, that's just a nice sliding fit in there, so I'm happy with that. Well, what I might do now, I'll get this cleaned up, we'll make up a key, and uh, we'll try and fit the housing into that before we take it out of the setup, and we'll just see how things, uh, things are looking. All right, right we've finished our slot. That's a bit of 8mm key steel, and that's not going to fit in the slot. Key steel is manufactured slightly oversized by a couple of thou. In this case, it's two thou. That allows you to do a hand fit into a keyway, and that's the way that it should be. So uh, I'll cut this off the length, and I'm going to do a uh, just a light scraping with a file just to get that to fit, and then we'll see how the uh, we'll see how the body fits in. Hello right, guys, I've got a key that I've made up, fits in there quite nicely, as I said this isn't for a drive, this is only for location, and that's a, a nice fit into there. This is my housing, now this is sitting 2mm thicker than what it needs to be, um, I need to take a couple of mil off the top of that, but uh, I want to see how this fit up goes first. So we've got our keyway cut. That's where we go anyway. Bring the table down a bit. Right, oh, let's try that again. I had the key on the wrong side. That's what you get when you don't pre-test everything out. There we go, that's a bit better. Let's try that again. Kissing down the side there. Mm. Oh, Jesus. That's better. That's better. Right. Yeah, that's beautiful. There's an air get finish in there. All right, I can now break this setup and uh, I'll then machine this keyway back to suit. Uh, actually, before I do break the setup, I might do a bit of drilling and counterballing for the mounting, mounting holes first. But um, yeah, that's looking really good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> oh, that's not good. All right, now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right over, we're done on this side. Um, we'll flip this over and we'll do the drilling and tapping for the mounting uh, into the housing now. And we'll also cut the um, location keyways uh, for that thrust support that we need. They're going to be 12 mil keyway. And we'll drill and tap in those keyways for uh, retaining screws to hold them in place. All right. We'll see you back on the next side. Done that. Um, I might take this out and just check to make sure that all our bolt holes and our keyways and everything line up, and I'll put it back in to do our uh, our uh, backstop keyways, and we'll see how it looks. Right, oh, very happy with that mount up. I've got uh, these screws all going very very easily. Everything's very even, so that's a good fit up. I'll pop that back in the vise and uh, we'll cut our keyways, keyways for our, uh, our stop supports. But uh, so far, so good. That key fits beautifully into that. It's a, it's a very nice little tapping fit there. I'm really happy with the fitment along that edge and the keyway. All right, guys, we're just um, cutting the um, backstop keyways uh, under, the, uh, under the foot here. This is what's going to rest up against the edge of the saddle to uh, to take that thrusting load, um, so that uh, it's not being transferred through the fasteners through those uh, M10 cap screws. So we're at depth at the moment. I'm just side cutting. I've got a 10 mil cutter in here at the moment, and uh, I've got to take that with our two 12 mil. So we'll do the same process we did with the other keys, which is um, just using the gauge box to get that uh, gauge to size, and we'll make sure that that's uh, even, Stevens all over. So I've got another key way to cut in here after I've done this one. So I'll have a fairly length register on that uh, edge of the saddle. All right, let's get into it. As you can see, I've already made a, a bit of a start on it. gauge block stack up in there that's a, a bit of a tight fit that's measuring up at 11.99 um, mil so I'll leave it at that and we'll do a fit to the keyway I know exactly where um, I am on the DRO so I can make this one an awful lot quicker set it up to the same as this one I will know they're exactly the same all right guys we'll move on get the next one cut what we'll then do is we'll come back and then we'll drill and tap for retaining screws to hold these uh, these keys in place. drilling and counter boring for the M6 socket head cap screws they're going to fasten the other base mount to the uh, to the housing so we'll finish that off and then we've just got a little bit of um, boring to do 
to uh, open up some clearances. So we'll, uh, we'll finish this out. Set up for a clearance counter bore on the end plates for the um, for the housing. Right, uh, let's have a look at what we're going to do now. So I need to create this scallop here to allow me to remove the end covers out of the housing. So it's just a clearance scallop that we need to put in there, and I'm going to do that with the boring head. So so far with the boring head, I've found the edges and got my zero point for my center point. Um, I put the boring head in, I back that off the radius of the scallop, which is 32.5, and I've now just got that lightly touching now. What I'll then do is start my cuts and index in to 28.75, so that will give me my scallop that I need there. So we'll make a start on that now. Oops. Now I'm just uh, hand feeding that down with a quill lever, so I'll continue on with this cut and uh, we'll come back when we're uh, onto our last cut and to depth. I'm going to make a slight design design change here. Um, I did have this groove set up that I was going to use for um, slide waste that I can mount this onto the table with, but I'm not going to cut that groove in there just yet. I might still cut that as a dovetail um, down the track if I do want to mount this onto the um, onto the uh, bed of the mill. So at this stage, I'm going to leave that groove out of it and keep my options open anyway. All right, we'll set up and we'll do the last one and uh, we'll see how everything fits together. All right, guys, well, that's our, our feet finished. Um, I've just got to do the do the keyways and I'll do those off camera there just to cut in a length, radius in the ends and then uh, drilling and counterboring, so no great rocket science in that. And the um, housing mounts up beautifully to it. So, I've got that keyway sitting in there. And that's the rear end showing our locating keys against the saddle these are our fasteners that go back up into the housing and these are the fasteners that we're going to be using to um, bolt it down to the top of the saddle as I said I've got to drill another two holes um, to be able to get one of the mounting sets in place which is no drama as I said allow me to strip it down and also measure up that uh, that, um, that feed screw for the saddle so I can um, draw it up and, uh, and make up a new one. All right, so that's, uh, that's the, uh, the base feed completed. All right, guys, we'll, uh, we'll move on to some more lighter machine. We've only got uh, pulleys really to finish off now and then, uh, and then assembly. All right, I'll catch you later, guys.
Alright guys, well that's our, our feet finished. Um, I've just got to do the do the keyways and I'll do those off camera there just to cut in a length radius in the ends and then uh, drilling and counterboring so no great rocket science in that and the um, housing mounts up beautifully to it. So I've got that keyway sitting in there. And that's the rear end. Showing our locating keys against the saddle. These are our fasteners that go back up into the housing and these are the fasteners that we're going to be using to um, bolt it down to the top of the saddle. As I said, I've got to drill another two holes um, to be able to get one of the mounting sets in place, which is no drama. As I said, allow me to strip it down and also measure up that uh, that, um, that feed screw for the saddle so I can um, draw it up and, uh, and make up a new one. Alright, so that's, uh, that's the, uh, the base feed completed. Alright guys, we'll, uh, we'll move on to some more lighter machine. We've only got uh, pulleys really to finish off now and then, uh, and then assembly. Alright, I'll catch you later guys. Alright guys, I'm sure that a few of, us, a few of you have uh, fast forwarded through to find out um, what this personal news is. Um, during the last six weeks of that shutdown, I've been in the hospital having a series of MRIs, scans and biopsies, and uh, I've had a, a positive result for um, prostate cancer, um, which I'm going to be having removed on the 19th of, of this month. So I elected for removal due to the nature of the cancer, and it had a 70% um, low grade level, and there was a 30% high grade level. So um, it's not something I'm comfortable sitting and waiting for um, due to that nature so uh, I've elected to have it removed so the type of surgery that's involved in this um, affects a lot of nerves and muscles down that lower part of your abdomen so bladder control erectile function bowel motion there's a whole range of things that can be affected and in some cases they can be long term uh, in very rare cases um, as a result of that, obviously I can't do much in the way of lifting, twisting or pushing, so cranking on handles or changing chucks and uh, moving things around in the workshops uh, out of the question for at least the next um, six to eight weeks um, during the recovery period. And the recovery period is fairly long um, and I'll be having that, that, uh, that, two, to three, that two to three months off work um, to, to aid in that recovery. Um, I'm doing some post-operative work at the moment, which is uh, strengthening pelvic muscles, which is gonna hopefully aid my recovery and control. Um, and we'll see how that goes, and I'll continue that obviously um, post-surgery as well. So, um, a bit of a shock. <laughs> I've got a few things in my favor on, on this particular um, cancer, and, and that is that it's very, very early stages. Uh, it's very, very small, measuring around about six mil in diameter. Um, I also have a very low PSA level as well. It was only, I think the latest one was 2.4. So it is a very low PSA level, which, which indicates that there's not a lot of action or movement as far as growth going at the moment. But it's something I don't want to leave sitting around for the next two, three, four years where it, uh, where it may spread and then I'm, I'm ruining the day that I didn't go ahead and get something done about it. And uh, while I'm reasonably young, um, I want to have the best chance I can. So uh, I've elected to go at this, uh, at this stage. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm very grateful for is uh, I've got a very loving wife uh, who's so supportive and she's also a wonderful nurse so I'm going to get the best of care there and uh, also my four sons so and, and the wider family and, and the support that I've had from my, uh, from my workmates and crew have been, uh, has been fantastic so lots and lots in my favour. This particular cancer has a 90% uh, a chance or better uh, of survival beyond 15 years so I have been told if you're going to get a cancer that this is the one to get <laughs> even though it is going to have some um, some short-term challenges while, uh, while we get some get some control back in again so I'm still looking forward to a, a very fruitful and long life um, and obviously medical science is advancing all the time and uh, there may be further um, post-operative treatments uh, in the oncology area that, uh, that come up in the next few years time so We'll just um, we'll wait and see how that pans out anyway. But uh, as I said, I'm, I'm still planning on being around for an awful long term, but it's just going to be a little bit of a, a short term glitch uh, while I get over this. And, uh, and, and please bear with me, the, uh, the videos um, aren't going to be coming out too fruitfully at the moment. 
uh, obviously because of this. So um, that's one of the things I'm trying to do at the moment is uh, is set up uh, work that I can just do by hand fitting. So I'm getting all the major machine work uh, out of the way on the on the sliding attachment, so I can just spend some time doing that that hand fitting work, which is which is uh, is not going to affect the lifting uh, or any of the uh, the areas around the uh, the surgery. Um, I'm also going to take the chance to get in and do a, a bit of design work uh, that I've been wanting to do. Um, uh, I want to really start getting my head around Fusion 360, which I have been enjoying and, uh, and, and working with drafting and coding, but I want to take that a step further. And the idea of sitting down watching daytime, daytime TV all day long just doesn't interest me in any way, shape or form. So I want to get things in place um, for the next two months that uh, I can be productive and, uh, and uh, feel like I've got a reason to get up every day. And I think that's really important uh, with that support, that, that support network around you for your, for your mental health. Um, you need to keep that positivity and, uh, and have a reason for doing things through the day and feel like you're having some contribution in your own life. So uh, that's where I'm at. Anyway, I'm sorry for that bad news, but uh, it is what it is and I need to deal with it and uh, try and stay as positive as I can. And uh, I've had this diagnosis now for, for just over a week and, and the first couple of days, getting up in the morning and having that in the back of your head again is, uh, is, is pretty daunting and uh, pretty hard to bear. But I'm sort of getting used to it. I'm sort of composing myself around it. So, uh, and as I said, uh, the support of my family and friends, uh, that's been made an awful lot easier. So the other thing I've done as well is um, do a lot of research, Googling, um, only looking at reputable um, universities and, and hospitals that do research and uh, looking at a lot of that stuff coming out, it, uh, it makes me feel a lot more positive about where I'm at and where I'm going to be going. So uh, given the diagnosis, I guess I'm in, a, I'm in the best place that I can be at the moment. And uh, yeah, we'll keep marching on. All right, guys, uh, we'll catch up with you as soon as I can and I'll, I will post uh, some little videos along the way and, and let you know what my progress is and, uh, and how I'm sitting and, and how I'm feeling and uh, um, what the positives are. Uh, look, if there's anyone else who, who's been through this firsthand, I know I haven't got a big viewership, but uh, if there's anyone else who's been through this firsthand and has got some advice, um, I'm always welcome to, to, uh, to first-hand advice. I've, I've had a number of my older mates go through this um, 10, 12, 15 years ago. And, uh, and in one case, my stepfather, who, who did this 20 years ago, and uh, have all had very, very good results out of it. So, uh, on touch wood, I'm very hopeful that, uh, that I'm going to be in the same boat. But as I said, if you've got any uh, first-hand experience, just leave a, a little comment below or support or anything. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, always, I'm always looking for other angles. All right, guys, we'll see you soon.